Uh, the, the locals is a, is a, uh, a slang term in, in English that refers to people in a town like the fictional town of Howland, uh, a, a summer town or a vacation town, I mean, I'm sure they have such towns in France uh, as well, mm -hmm. where there, um, there's, a, there's a summer population or a kind of tourist population, people who are there part of the time, usually from the city, and they come and, and enjoy the, the, uh, the surroundings and spend money. But then there are the people who live in that same town year round uh, through the winter, uh, usually more of, of a working class population. Um, and in, uh, in American parlance, those are referred to as the locals. You know, epigraphs, um, uh, usually I don't like epigraphs, other writers' epigraphs, because I feel like it's a cheap way of giving a kind of classical veneer. You know, you, you, you write a novel about contemporary life, but you give it an epigraph from Aristotle, and then it seems very sincere. I'm very, I'm very suspicious of that. But in this case, um, the novel begins with 9-11, with and by the time it's over, uh, at least in my mind, one of the things that's happened is that Americans themselves have internalized the compulsion to to blow it up, so to speak, to destroy it, and this comes out in uh, in our you know contemporary politics in America in uh, uh, in extraordinary ways, and in the, the the Tea Party movement in America. I don't know if, if French people will be familiar with that, but a very conservative populist movement that is all about dismantling the government uh, and focusing on on individual responsibility. So when I, when I read that quote, it seemed extraordinary to me, the language of it. I, I thought, you know, can you, this is the, a governor of an American state, I thought, can you not hear yourself? Can you not hear what you're saying? Um, and the reason I didn't put his name on it is just because it felt to me more interesting as a kind of voice of the people rather than being assigned to this one particular politician um, who's assigned to a particular party, and I didn't want it to seem uh, like that was my point. I, I had to. I, I had to attribute it to, to oh, some place. Okay. But I, I um, uh, no, I like what you say about uh, uh, the novel being a kind of uh, contemporary chronicle of its mm -hmm. own. Uh, at least it is for me. I mean, I, I know that that many many great writers um, have the desire to write about uh, the future or or the past or or some kind of alternate reality. But for me, it's always been you know a very specific way of of thinking about now. No. Um, and, and the, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a larger now than a newspaper deals with because you know this is already. It's hard for me to believe that the events I'm writing about in this book are already almost 20 years old. But um, but still, it's it, historically speaking, it's it's the now and, and an effort to kind of come to terms with it or, or make some sense of of what's happening. So. Yeah. Well, first of all, yeah, it's uh, uh, the other towns referred to in, in the novel, the towns around Howland, are real places. And I know those take places pretty well because, for one thing, that's quite near where I, where I grew up. Uh, so that, that area of, of southwestern Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's as if I always thought, you know, if, if the map were made of rubber and you stretched it so a little space appeared, you could kind of mm -hmm. drop Howland in there. Um, so it has, you know, the attributes of a number of the towns around it, but it's, but it's an imaginary place. And yes, the name uh, uh, Howland, I thought of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, the making it into a compound word like that, Howland. But also, I had in mind um, Allen Ginsberg's Howell. Yeah. The, both reasons, really. The, the, the practical reason uh, being that it's a place that I know reasonably yeah. well. I mean, there are, there are little vacation communities like that mm -hmm. all over the country, so in that sense I could have said it anywhere. But that's a place that I know, but also it's true that if you, you, know, if you, if you feel that you're writing a book about America and American democracy, you know, Massachusetts is the, is the cradle of that, so you get a certain you know, mythic resonance there that you wouldn't if the book were in Kansas or Arizona or someplace like that. Um, 
at one point I even went so far as to I was I was choosing the characters' last names from the manifest. I don't know that word, the, the the list of passengers on the Mayflower. Oh. Uh, but I, I couldn't it didn't work. I had to give it <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> Yes, I, I mean it's, I don't want to, it is possible to put too much importance on 9-11, on I mean I think a lot of the things, uh, a lot of the sources of, of the current uh, climate of, of American populist anger, they were there already, mm -hmm. but, but in an American context, certainly 9-11 uh, was the beginning of something and we didn't realize at the time what it was the beginning of, which is basically a, a long, intense political uh, reaction. Um, so it was important to me to, to try to uh, begin the novel there or, or around there, but it's also very hard to write uh, good, it's hard to good, make good art about 9-11. I usually, when other writers or, or filmmakers try it, uh, I, I usually don't have a good response, but um, that's part of the reason why I chose this uh, uh, very eccentric uh, view of events from a sort of underground man uh, living, living in the city. Yes, yeah, very much, very much. The, 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 an extraordinary change, I think, in a, in a relatively short time um, in, uh, uh, in the city. At least you say we, we only see it briefly in the city, but it has yeah. um, uh, gone, uh, it's reverted, uh, I think, to, to what it was before. That's another characteristic, I think, of, of not just 9 11, but of, of tragedy in general, especially a kind of common tragedies, that we think that it changes us forever, but in fact, um, as a uh, 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 as Mark's wife says at one point, you know, it's uh, we overestimate that. That in fact, the, the power of, of who you are, the power of the everyday, uh, is not to be underestimated. Although I wasn't really thinking, as far as the the end of the book, uh, it does take place after the financial crash. But 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 it, the, the book sort of skips over it in a way because because honestly, you would have had to write another hundred pages mm -hmm. to talk about that. But um, the ending that I had in mind is, is slightly uh, different because I, you know, if I thought of it uh, as a book about the the early years of this, you know, American century, um, then it's bracketed on one end by 9/11, and on the other end, um, w without without giving too much away about that that last chapter, to me, what it represents is uh, a kind of homegrown uh, miniature. You know, one-person version of Occupy Wall Street, yeah. and if you if you do the, the the chronological math in the book, that last scene takes place I think just a few weeks before the beginning of the real uh, Occupy. So, so I don't you know just as I don't want to put too much uh, uh, invest 9/11 itself with too much power, I don't want to invest Occupy with too much power either. Not at all. In fact, I, I I'm very I'm skeptical of it in a lot of ways, but it seemed to me like a good uh, bookend. Yeah. Uh, to what to what went on uh, in that century, and also a somewhat hopeful one uh, uh, in in the in the figure of uh, um, uh, Haley. Haley, yeah, uh, who who is maybe not that politically sophisticated, but she's also seventeen years old, and she's just waking up. Yes, it's always a challenge. I mean, I guess particularly in in this book, uh, uh, it, it's always a challenge to um, to balance the handling of time. On the one hand, you want your reader to feel oriented. On the other hand, and probably more importantly, you want it to reflect real lived experience. And 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 one of the fundamentals of that lived experience is that some days. Um, are very important and specific, mm -hmm. uh, but other types, uh, especially in a small town, I would think, um, it's a bit more of a cycle, you know, it's a bit more about repetition and progress and it should mm -hmm. feel like that. So, so I tried to put uh, little signposts in the book. Yeah. Right. Right. Those are the, those are, are in the background, and yeah. you, you hear the echoes of them. But uh, yeah, I guess it does. Uh, you do have to put a bit of trust in the reader to, to write that way. I, I mean, I put an enormous amount of trust in the reader to know that the financial collapse happened. <laughs> I mean, I think it would be a pretty. Uh, some parts of the book might be confusing if you had never if you didn't know that.
Well, I, I, it's not that it's too simple, it's that it, it gives me too much credit. I mean, I, I started writing the novel in 2013, and, and mm -hmm. I, I'd love to be able to say, oh, I saw it all coming, but I did not see it all coming. It's hard not to read it now uh, as, uh, as being uh, a kind of allegory of the, of the Trump era, and I suppose, <clears throat> you know, that's fair enough, well, even though Hattie is in, in important ways very different yeah. uh, from Trump. I, I think I, at one point, I, uh, I th someone was asking me to describe the difference between them, and I said that probably Hattie and Trump went to a lot of the same parties in New York, but Hattie would just leave when Trump showed up. He couldn't stand to be in the room. Um, but the, the phenomenon, and I don't know how, how strictly American this is, I don't know if this exists uh, uh, in, in Europe or elsewhere to the same degree, but American, especially American you know, working class people invest a lot of, of authority, uh, 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 moral authority and also just practical authority in businessmen and especially in very, very rich people. And this, this is a phenomenon that existed before Trump, that Trump is simply a part of. Um, you know, I lived in New York City during all of the Mike Bloomberg years, for instance, when Bloomberg, who is uh, one of the richest men in the world, mm -hmm. uh, decided he wanted to become the mayor of New York. And um, it, it's hard to describe, but people think if you're, let's say you're, if you're a rich person, there might be something suspicious about that. But if you were a really, really rich person, then you have some kind of, of power that's not only intellectual, but also moral. And part of it has to do with the idea that if you're really rich, you can't be bought. You know, like you somehow you're incorruptible. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very stubborn uh, idea in American political life, and 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 I stubborn enough that I wanted to write about it before, before the the awful ascension of uh, of Trump. Mm -hmm. and, and and Mark, uh, you know, a, a lot of what what people might read, uh, especially non-American readers, might read as Mark's flaws, uh, a kind of over-ambition, uh, you know, an obsession with money, a worship of the rich. <clears throat> Those are pretty classically American virtues, uh, mm -hmm. uh, especially the idea that you are supposed to want to better yourself. You're supposed to, you're supposed to feel some kind of dissatisfaction and, and want to um, climb the, the economic and social ladder, and Mark <clears throat> has internalized that idea, uh, you know, to his, uh, to his peril. I think a lot about. Uh, I mean, I think a lot about form, but I think probably most of all about uh, the beginnings of, mm -hmm. of all my novels and how to um, uh, how to do them and uh, how to construct them in a way that's that that is functional but also uh, uh, unfamiliar. Um, that's not. There were a couple of of, uh, of inspirations for doing it this way. One of them, as a as a teacher of Flaubert, you may know. Uh, you know, what's another novel with a great disappearing first person narrator. Yeah, uh, so I had I had uh, Madame Bovary uh, very much in mind there. Also, um, uh, this will sound odd, especially in conjunction with Madame Bovary, but have you seen the, the, the Stanley Kubrick film, 2001? Yeah. Do you remember how it begins? Mm -hmm. uh, so that I, in, in the early days of my writing the book, when I was working on this beginning, um, the name of the computer file that I kept it in, it was called Ape Scene, because I was trying to write a, a prologue that was a prologue in the same uh, purely thematic way uh, as the prologue of 2001. I, I liked the idea that it seemed like it was introducing the story, and in fact it is, but not in the way you thought. Yeah. Uh, that, that it introduces us to Mark, but gives us a kind of outside view of Mark so that we see how he looks to others before we see how he looks to himself. Um, and I just, I, 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 liked, I liked that idea of, of a prologue that that's, turns out to be a prologue in theme only. Uh, uh, although there is the, that, that you know that connection to uh, to Mark, where mm -hmm. Mark leaves the city and we and we follow him, um, I, I liked. I, it'll sound uh, perverse, but I liked writing in that voice. But I certainly could never write in that voice for a whole book. That'd be too much, too much for the reader, too much for me. That first person voice. Yeah, that, I, that's I like that, that reading of it very much. Yeah, uh, as I said before, it's it's hard to it's hard to write about 9/11 period, and so I, mm -hmm. I liked uh, you know the idea of a um, a strange uh, uh, skeptic's view of it. Um, you know that that there were we 
what's objectionable about most 9-11 related art is not only how sentimental it is, but how, it, how much it takes for granted uh, certain sentimental mm -hmm. tropes about the events and how everyone felt about it and what happened and, and all that. So, so uh, I like the idea of the, you know, beginning with it, but beginning with it in a way that, that uh, uh, offered a, a take on it that seemed almost uh, uh, comically uh, off kilter. But I also like, frankly, I like the idea that in some respects, uh, that unnamed narrator kind of turns out to be right. You know, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that people are faking it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and that his, his somewhat cynical view of the way people really are, mm -hmm. you know, you, you could argue that he's not, he's not totally wrong. I, at first, I, you know, I, every, every, every reference you make is very flattering to me of the Altman and, and uh, uh, Elliot's and Flaubert and Stendhal. I, I did have in mind, um, I was thinking about Middlemarch uh, uh, overall because I, I wanted, to me, one of the, um, the great pleasures uh, and amazements of, of Middlemarch is you, know, you get your hundreds of pages into it before something happens that makes you realize that even in this small patch of ground, these, some of these major characters who are living right next to each other don't know each other, and that's not for reasons of geography, obviously, but for mm -hmm. reasons of, of, of class and social construct. So I wanted to, to, to keep the book um, in that, a, a similarly small patch of ground, uh, but have it be a very wide array of voices, uh, uh, characters, etc. Um, I think uh, there's, there's one chapter of the book, it's, it's, it's the third one, although it's numbered two because of the, because of the zero. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that one specifically, uh, I, I set out to write with no space breaks, uh, so that all of the point of view transitions have to be accomplished some other way. And really, the reasons for that were, uh, you know, sometimes I just, I, I, sometimes I just like to do things because they're hard. I mean, because I think like I mm. think it's a challenge. So there was that, but there was also, uh, I think, the idea that in a small town, in particular. Um, you're too close to other people. Yeah. That, that, that paradoxically in the city it's very easy to be private, uh, but in a small town everybody is, you know, everybody knows your business maybe more than you'd like them to, and so I wanted it to feel cramped in that way. Uh, but again, I felt like that was a decision that wouldn't be fruitful for the whole book, uh, but for that one, you know, 90 or so page sequence, mm -hmm. uh, I tried to, to accomplish, the, you know, figure out how to accomplish those point of view shifts without interrupting the action. I, I, I guess I would say it would be one, it would be a very good definition of the kind of fiction I write. And yeah. other people, I, can, I can't say it's, that's true uh, across the board. Uh, but for me, yeah, that's one of the, that's, that's one of the things that, um, that not only the novel does, but that it does better than other forms. Really, is is to uh, to be able to, to toggle back and forth uh, between uh, the interior uh, and and the social, and to uh, explore the, the ways that that those um, uh, influence each other sometimes unconsciously. Right, right. That's and a good. novel is a way to to take a distance. Yeah. Yes, yes, and a way to look uh, uh, critically yeah. at, at some of those those foundational uh, ideas and yeah. uh, uh, received ideas. It's it's important, I think, not to to try not to um, condescend, especially to fictional figures, because I I don't think that uh, uh, you know Marx really. I feel sorry for Mark uh, and his. His ideas are not really about uh, greed per se, but as you say, they're 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 ideas that he um, that he was invested with uh, as an American, as, as as a young American. These are things that he that he he has internalized uh, from a, a culture and from a history that that's uh, far far greater than he is. Um, somebody was mentioning the other day that he's in some ways he's a kind of cousin to um, Adam Morey from the Privileges, who who uh, uh, also um, was formed by the idea. That uh, you're supposed to better yourself. You're supposed to want more. That's uh, you have to keep moving forward or die. That that's that's the American way. Yeah.
I mean, yes. if I remember that passage you, that you're you're mentioning, is that Mark has a you know, kind of interior a, a moment where uh, he's drinking while yeah. this happens, and he has a moment where he thinks like maybe maybe the America uh, the American idea maybe it explains you or maybe you just use it to explain you know mm. what, uh, yourself and the, and there you have exactly what you were talking about the interplay between the, the private and the uh, yeah. and, and the social. The American sense that that uh, uh, that things would get better for you, that your children would be better off than you are, etc. That that I mean, at least from an eco economic perspective, that was true for a long time. It's mm -hmm. not it's not uh, uh, so true uh, anymore. Um, and and that is the source of a lot, at least in the in the U.S., of a, of a lot of the, the populist anger and resentment and and um, xenophobia and racism and the idea that that you know people. If I don't have this thing I was promised, it must be because someone has taken it from mm -hmm. me. Um, and that, and what happens there, uh, you know, and this is not an American phenomenon. This is uh, centuries old, really. But uh, when, when, when a, a populace becomes disenchanted in that way with with institutions or or, or with politics, um, they will look for uh, one strong figure uh, in which to. Uh, uh, to place to replace that that faith, and and uh, voila, fascism. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. You could, I, 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 it would be going too far, I think, to say that Hallam turns into a kind of you know fascist uh, uh, state, but uh, mm -hmm. but there's but there's a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, and, and in uh, in this moment. Yeah. In, in this historical moment. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I think um, w w the. Maybe the, the genesis of the whole thing for me was wanting to try to find a way to to ask myself the question, you know, how did we get from there to here in such a short time? There being the the, the sense of uh, overwhelming um, fellow feeling and patriotism and compassion, etc., that that followed 9/11, from you know in less than a decade to uh, the the mainstreaming of what were previously radical ideas about um, uh, dismantling the state. Just thought that's a strange journey in such a short time, uh, and I, you know, so I wanted to find out, yeah, how uh, about American identity and American um, uh, feeling um, in uh, in this particular moment. Yes, I mean not not entirely, but in very large part. Yes, yes. Uh, Jerry was ahead of his time in a way because yeah, that's yeah. that's really the mainstream idea now in America is that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, among the white male population in, in particular, um, it's not only that they feel under attack, but that while they're in their own view, while they're under attack, they're also being told that they're the oppressors. And so Jerry has his moment early in the book where um, he's lost his job, he has no money, uh, no, no, no wife, no family, really, he has nothing, uh, and yet he's being told that he's a kind of bastion of, of privilege. And that um, that enrages him. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, uh, unfortunately an mm -hmm. idea with a, a lot of currency in American life today. Yeah. Yes, uh, I guess the only reason I, I hesitate is that that uh, as you say, different characters have very different ideas yeah, of, of what equality mm -hmm. and justice might might consist of. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, justice in, in particular. Yeah, that. Uh, uh, Jerry feels that that there are great injustices uh, all around him, and and again, uh, as with that that narrator of the of the prologue, Jerry's a, a, a an extreme and, and alienating character, but he's also not always wrong. You know, mm -hmm. occasionally I, I feel like um, he'll say something in one of his long blog rants that you know that I might actually agree with, um, uh, very occasionally, <laughs> uh, but. Um, uh, yeah, so he's he's concerned with the justice, and and, and Haley, as you say, is uh, I mean that's exactly right that she's she has like the kind of political awakening that a teenager has, frankly, which is just mm -hmm. I don't know what to do, but I know that this is wrong, and uh, uh, that's that's as far as she gets. Yes, yes, I, I agree, and uh, uh, one of the reasons why. Um, it was uh, important to me to set the novel uh, in, a, in a rural place uh, uh, outside the city is that um, uh, the things that are particularly white men in our culture are taught to think of as their enemies, um, you know, uh, uh, immigration, uh, the, the federal government, uh, uh, you know, uh, etc. Uh, uh, those things are largely, they're 
mostly invisible mm-hmm. in small town life. There really aren't a lot of people of color in Howland. I mean, in fact, there really aren't any. But the fact that that's true allows you to speculate uh, and allows you to project onto those phenomena uh, even more fear, uh, even more paranoia. So, um, uh, so yeah, speculation of, of, of that kind as well as, as financial speculation, definitely. And then even in a, uh, in a, in a more uh, modest kind of way, uh, one of the questions that I felt like um, uh, was uh, like, a, like a bell that was rung occasionally throughout the, the book is, what is a house? Um, mm, yeah. Because there are many, many different definitions in the book of, of what constitutes a house or a home. Yes, although I had to remind myself, I mean, you know, internet, internet history, so to speak, moves so fast yeah. that I really had to, to make an effort to remind myself, uh, you know, when Jerry is writing his blog in 2002 or three. Mm-hmm. How long ago that was, you know, that things were different then. Um, so he's really just at the, he's, he's almost at the dawn of it. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, but yes, it, it changes everything. Uh, uh, the, um, the type of speech that, uh, that the internet allows. Um, more so than facing a camera, where I think you're, you're conscious when you're facing a camera that you're speaking to the public. I think when you're alone in your room typing, uh, for the internet, you you are you know that you're speaking to somebody, but really primarily you're speaking to yourself. Um, so I, I wanted to, to find a way to write about the, the specificity of that. And, and TV is exactly what what I was talking about before. It's the ultimate tool of the idea that um, uh, the 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 object of your fear is out there somewhere, but you can't see it. Mm-hmm. And and we'll we'll show it to you, but that's you know the it's still just an image. Uh, uh, but but the image. Uh, for for Mark's parents, for instance, um, the image and the reality uh, just be, become the same thing. That is, if you see something on Fox News, it's as present in your life as if it were outside your window. At the end of the book, the things in Howland that have been that have been blown up, uh, which uh, are you know. Its, its institutions, uh, the, the character of its uh, uh, communal life, and its history. Those are all things, I mean, the, I, it, I, it's, I don't wanna, it sounds too simple when I say it, but the central irony uh, is that those things which were supposedly under attack, uh, in the end, the people of Howland needed no help blowing those things up, they blew it up themselves. I, I think it's um, well. Uh, this was mostly just for me in, in, a, in writing the book, but for me, each of the chapters has some little formal thing that's individual to it. I mean, yeah. we talked about in the, the chapter that has no space breaks, uh, and so I think it's really mostly, if not all, one long chapter of the book that has all these things in it. That has the, the directly mm-hmm. quoted news. Uh, the blog I think appears multiple times, but yeah. but the other voices, the newspaper, the the town minutes. Um, uh, and I, I wasn't really th- thinking at the time about the novel in, in, um, in contrast to those, but I was thinking about them as um, other voices, institutional voices, uh, uh, other ways of telling the story. Uh, the police blotter is another one. I don't know if there is such a thing mm-hmm. as the police blotter in, in France, but in small town papers especially, kind of at the end, you'll see like who got arrested that week for yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. And those things tell a story too, but, but each of them tells a story a little bit falsely. And, and, I, and I think the idea that, that these, these other storytelling methods, these official uh, uh, narratives are unreliable, that too uh, contributes to the, to the anger uh, within the book. And I guess if you want, you know, I, I don't, I would, it would seem like I'm flattering myself to say like, but you know, in contrast to the novel, which always tells the truth, but, um, but I guess I, I can, you're right, I think that the, that the I mean, it, it's not going too far to say that one of the reasons novels are still worth writing um, is because is as a counter narrative, as a, a, a counter narrative to to um, the uh, the official ways of of telling the story of what's happening to us.
Well, I mean, uh, uh, I guess uh, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, how many? I've only written a set of books, and Balzac wrote, I, I you know, a hundred. Well, then many. Yeah. Um, uh, but but I would agree with it. But I I. I I'm not conscious of it when I when I'm working or when I start a new book. At least I, I make an effort not to be conscious of it because I think you yeah, know you course. can, especially when you've developed a, a body of work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you do notice that certain um, uh, themes persist or or recur, uh, but you um, uh, it's it's possible to be too self conscious of, about that uh, in your work. So I, I so I know that, but I'm in a constant process of trying to forget it. <laughs>